What's up, people? It's an H-Girl30 here, and, well, as you can see, yeah, I don't particularly have a new hairstyle, just the hat I wear. But anyway, I have not done these in a while, and I have said that before. This is my raw review for February 11th. Now, I occasionally watch raw because sometimes there are some surprises that I would like to see. And honestly, I have to say that this raw was not bad, especially the fact that it was a go-home show before the Elimination Chamber. But the one thing I will admit is that, good grief... That was probably the oddest, most uncomfortable opener I've ever seen in my life. Now, I don't know what's going on with CM Punk and and uh, and Paul Heyman. It just seemed like they have probably the most oddest bromance ever. And that was like a really odd segment. Number one, Paul Heyman really didn't ha not have any reason to retire or leave the WWE, except the fact that he had if this man had something hanging over his head. But let's face it, he really didn't, honestly. Brock Lesnar ended up taking out uh, uh, taking out Vince McMahon from the past Raw. So there was really no reason for him to come out there and declare him declare himself to be, you know, going into retirement and absolutely abandoning um, CM Punk. There was really no reason for that. And then the fact that CM Punk came out, and I mean sure, their best friend's great, you hug, but it was just it was just weird. Like, the whole segment was weird. I'm sorry, it really was. But the one thing I will say is that my match of the night happens to be Chris Jericho's match that um, that he had against Daniel Bryan. That was a really, really good match. Pay-per-view worthy, in my opinion. And it was very entertaining to watch. The matches, some of the matches were pretty quick. And you kind of knew, like, especially Mark Henry's match that he had against the Great Khali. You kind of knew that, that match was going to last only two seconds. Because... Mark Henry is pretty much coming back to be a powerhouse heel, and he's going to forever, I mean, I really don't know why he's still a heel, but I guess him being a heel it works for him, and he's getting a lot of heat for it. But honestly, his match was fairly quick. There were a few matches that were fairly quick, but I have to say that the Shield segment was pretty good. The ending, the outcome of the Shield segment. Not so much the shield, and what I mean by that is, I love the shield because of the the not so much of their anonymity because they didn't have any, but it's the fact that you didn't really know what their purpose was. Like you, you really didn't know what they what what they um, what they stood for, the reason why they attacked people, and that is what made them interesting for me. But honestly, what really messed things up, and I've actually expressed this before in my reviews about. Let's say if you're a guy or a girl and you see somebody who is really attractive that you want to go talk to and then they open their mouths and you're like, never mind. That's pretty much how it was with the shield. Good grief. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins suck on the mic. I'm sorry. They are so bad. They lack an emotion. They, they look like they're reading from a script or trying to remember their lines. It's bad. I'm sorry. The only person that saved it for me was, uh, was Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose was pretty much the only person that saved that segment for me because he had a lot of emotion behind it, even though it was somewhat similar to the Stinger. Yeah, it was somewhat similar to Sting and Sting's Joker gimmick. But still, he had a lot of emotion and he brought a lot of heat to the Shield, which is what's supposed to happen. And it was great how to see the how to see the the Breakfast Club pretty much come down. And yeah, they're all the Breakfast Club members, and Ryback is the newest one. Sorry. But either or, it was nice to see the Breakfast Club come down and clean house and go after them and then go up the steps and be interactive in the crowd. It's really nice. And it's kind of showing me that maybe, just maybe, they might go back to TV 14. And it seems to me that after WrestleMania, they may be hinting that because ratings are low. And let's face it, after The Rock leaves, they'll be struggling. So I wouldn't be surprised that they're actually going to go back to TV 14 because they've been hinting it a lot. Not only with The Rock's... Um, promos but also with some of their commercials as well as how interactive they are now with the backstage and also with the crowds and fighting in the crowds they're becoming a little bit more interactive so it's a possibility they might go back to tv 14 but either or that's another thing in general that's another video in general but i have to say that the way that they built up the elimination chamber as much as i don't like champs club matches i don't like 
former championship matches. I just don't like it. I'm sorry, it bothers me. Because I feel like that, and I've already done a video on this, I feel like that it actual, absolutely excludes the mid-card or excludes anyone that has, that has the potential to be in an Elimination Chamber match. But I have to say that the way, I have to say that the, the actual lineup in the Elimination Chamber match could be somewhat interesting. You got Daniel Bryan. You got both teams of Team Hell No. Kane and Daniel Bryan. You got Jack Swagger, who pretty pretty much did a 180 for his past character and literally became a lot more aggressive. And I like this new Jack Swagger. Then you got, of course, Randall Keith Orton. Of course, he's in it. Then you got Chris Jericho, which should definitely make it interesting. And then... You have Mark Henry, the pretty much the, the biggest powerhouse of them all in the match. It's interesting how the match is pretty much dominated by heels. I guess Team Hell No are still a heel team. I don't know. They're kind of, you really can't tell. They're too gooberish to actually be, and yes, I said gooberish. They're too gooberish to be heels, but then they kind of have that whole face thing going on, but you can't necessarily tell. The one thing I can definitely say is that they pretty much have an even number amount of heels and faces if you have to put that together. So it should still be an interesting match. But going off from there to the final segment of the night, The Rock. People have been waiting for The Rock to come out since the beginning of the whole show. And he finally came out pretty much giving Nashville his props. I had no idea he lived in Nashville, seeing how I have tons of relatives from there. Maybe they knew him. But either or... <laughs> His actual final segment was amazing. It was funny. It was entertaining for me. And I'm a fan of The Rock. But the fact that they that he actually had a confrontation with CM Punk was somewhat refreshing. Because it kind of gave you a little bit of a taste of what could happen. Not to mention makes you wonder who the true winner would be. Because if The Rock ended up taking out CM Punk, you all may be like, oh, he's going to win. But since CM Punk got the upper hand, it shows that it's a possibility that CM Punk could be a good opponent for The Rock. So honestly, the way it ended was great. The way it began was weird. The middle, the, the matches in between were okay. And I'm not going to lie, it did kind of bother me a little bit that Wade Barrett got taken out by a rookie. I'm sorry. Bo Dallas... Yeah, it, it bothers me a little bit that he got taken out by a rookie, but I understand why he did that because Bo Dallas is just now coming from NXT and he's trying to build up a feud with probably one of the, the Intercontinental Champions. That's as best as you can go when you start from a rookie. And the fact is, it's going to do great for Bo Dallas, but it's going to, I mean, but in a way, it kind of sort of makes Wade Barrett look weak. But that's a whole nother video in, in, in itself. And the fact that he beat Kofi Kingston was something I really didn't care about because I already knew he was going to win. But either or... Oh, and Damian Sandow is forever going to be awesome. Even though he lost this match, he will forever be awesome to me. That guy is probably the best he'll ever. But anyway, I got tons of videos on that. But anyhow, my overall thoughts on Raw is that it was not bad. I have to say that it was a pretty good buildup for the uh, for the Elimination Chamber. It was, it was pretty good. I'm not going to say it was excellent, but it was okay. Building up to Elimination Chamber, it kind of did give you an idea, gave you a little bit of a taste on how it would be for the Elimination Chamber. And I have to say that I might just watch it. Not be like, I'm looking forward to it, but I am going to say that I might just watch it. But, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what do you guys think about this? Leave your comments in the comment section below on how you feel about Raw or send me a video response. Because I'm absolutely curious on how you guys feel about the Elimination Chamber and whether or not you're going to watch the pay-per-view. But anyway, this is Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out. Later.